Hey, that'll do. It's uh, footy and frothies. It's preview time. Daggy and Barney with you. Joined, and that song would be a throwback for those that know. Joined by Trevor from Club Trev. Hello, boys. The the origin of footy and frothies, actually. <laughs> What, Been a long time since K, I heard five, that song. Five years ago, mm. back in the day, where we all started this podcast gimmick. Uh, he's joining us for the preview. Uh, Barney's here as well, and we've got a bit to get into this evening. Uh, Trev, well, just give us a bit about you, for those that don't know, where you're footy, you'd be a Parramatta fan, footy background, just a local I'm, local larrikin slash legend. Well, I played for Springwood Bears back in the oh, day, if that counts yeah. for anything. Beautiful. I don't know if they're still called the Springwood Bears, but... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, you yeah, follow Parramatta, and um, after watching them the last couple of weeks, I think I'm about as fit as some of those players. Mm-hmm. Oh, they are they're terrible. They're terrible. They yeah. Some of them try their absolute, you know, wear their hearts on their sleeves, and some of them just yeah, whatever. No, not absolutely. here, not here. Just getting paid, yep. whatever. There's there's no there's no passion, and you can tell the teams already at the top who are starting to like who show passion, and that. There's a there's a big break. Who's you and you you do watch a fair bit of footy and um, when you get the chance? Well, who's, which teams you enjoyed the most this year? Um, and I know Barney will like this. I love watching the Sharks and terrible with names. And I remember when he started off the bench, the number seventeen off the bench, bald, black. Tom Hazelton. Yeah, uh, Hazelton. Hazelton. Yeah. And as soon as I saw him play, and I know he's played a few years and blah blah blah, but I went, this this guy's got to be on the starting line. He is. Big, he is tough. I mean, I think he scored three tries this year, has he? Am I right mm-hmm. for number eight? And he nearly, double, he nearly got a double two. the other day. Yeah. Yeah. He nearly got a double the other day. And um, it, for number eight, he's got a bit of speed. He, yeah, he's big, he's strong. Yep. Carries, he seems like a good ball player. Um, getting to my age, whether it's following Parramatta or getting to my age, I'm, I'm more into players now. Mm-hmm. I, um, I I think there's some, some brilliant players. I know people hack on Reese Walsh, for example, Mate, I, I think he is he is a star in I, the making. I, I love Reese Walsh. Yeah. I, mean, yes. I, I love him. He's good for the game. He's good for the marketing of the game. Okay, he scores some tries. Is he a big head? Of course he's a big head. He's on TV every, every week. He's on every commercial. He's like, yeah, yeah. he's brilliant for the game. Um, Carrigan, Pat Carrigan, um, Crichton went yep. to the dogs. I, yeah, so I, I'm starting I – f- I follow more – Players now rather than... No, fair enough. Rather than team. I go for Parramatta in my heart, like, but they got nothing. No. If they come if they come 13th this year, I'd be stoked. Yeah, and they've but, just lost Gutho for five weeks. Yep. So, so And God, then Sivo had a brain snap them. the other day. I don't know what he got for that, but that, that's... Nothing. Yeah, didn't he really? No, yeah, nothing. Okay, that should have been two weeks. But mm. I tipped Brisbane at the start of the year and I'll, I'll stand strong. I'll stand strong with Broncos. Sharks are the one to watch. Very good. There you go. Uh, news today, I guess we'll just quickly touch on Jason Demetrio cop the cop the ass last night. Uh, very interesting that his me- the final message to the boys was in the Herald within 15 minutes of getting sacked. If that doesn't see- speak to the um, the leaks at the club, <laughs> I don't know what else will. Uh, it's a lovely message, and, and uh, all the best to him. But yeah, any any takeaways yet, Barn? Or we'll just see how it plays out. What's what's he really talk about? Obviously, feel a little bit sorry for the bloke. He's obviously got family to feed, and um, you know now got to go and find, secure himself another job somewhere else. Um, but it's the cut and thrust of rugby league, really, isn't it? It's a it's a cutthroat game. Um, Sam Burgess put out the warning signs out there nine months ago, mate. Like it, for mine, it's a failure from the the board more than anything else. Um, they were they were showing the the issues there. They went back and re-signed the bloke, <laughs> and now they now they've gone and have to double down and sack him after after the fact. So it's the Titans um, all over. Mm-hmm. It's the Titans all over, isn't From it? From last year. Yeah, yeah like, and Barney says, like, I mean, you can have the greatest coach in the world, but if the people at the top... Yep. You, you've got nothing. You've got nothing on the field. The poor bloke. Yeah, yeah. The, I think there's been a bit of un- undermining in there, and um, obviously some of the players are off him as well. So probably something that had to be done, but I think this probably should have been done at the back end of last year when they missed the eight uh, whenever so. unexpectedly, and um, the warning signs are already put out there. It's very interesting that look, it, it, it's almost like, I don't know if it's a fait accompli, but it, it's very much Wayne Bennett's their top dog now again. I wonder if that's player-driven, and I suspect it may well be, uh, or, or, you know, the idea of the love of the idea of a fantasy. But any thoughts on that, Barn? And I'll ask you, Trev. Oh, for mine, it just sets up perfectly for a Sam Burgess return, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. He finishes next year at um, Warrington. He finishes out this year, has another season. They signed Bennett for two seasons and he does a year under Bennett as an assistant. 
before he kicks off his coaching career at South. So. Yeah, the Make, master and the apprentice. Makes sense. Bennett moves on. Any that Burgess Burgess comes straight in and bang. He's yeah. He's on the market. He's he said today he's on the market, so I'd be shocked if it doesn't happen at this stage, to be honest. Yeah. So. I, I would count back from all the other teams. Who's he gonna coach for? And you go you just go through them. No, 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 no. no. Yes. And he, he had all the you know, their their top four or five games. Like the the anyway. best players in their in their squad he had up and firing and very happy under his control last time he was there. Well, so. that, that's what I mean. I'm, I'm sure they've gone to their top five or six players and said, like, who should we go after? And his name would have been on all the lips, I suspect. I would think so. Uh, yeah, no other big news in the, couple, in the 40 hours since we've talked, so we might as well get into... Oh, DCE got off. Oh, DCE got off. So he's in the team. And um, <laughs> Gutho's out for five weeks, as we've mentioned, so it doesn't help at all. But let's get into our preview, Trev. So strap in and you can give your thoughts as well. We kick off on Thursday Let your night. listeners know I'm going in blind here. Like, so, I didn't know what, what you did. were talking about. It's how you live your life, isn't it? Yeah. Going it wrong. is the story of my life. I just mow lawns. Okay. Uh, we've got Thursday night. South's on the back up. Coached now by Ben Horby. We didn't mention that. But uh, take on Penrith. Tane Milne suspended, obviously, for what he did. What are Penrith paying? About a dollar three? Dollar fourteen, which is probably <laughs> overs. Uh, I haven't looked at the other markets yet, but um, Thompson comes back on the, uh, Isaac Thompson back on the wing for Tane Milne. Uh, Tom Burgess back to the bench, and Moali starts. Uh, Colin Tungi starts in the front row yet again. Uh, Sonny Taruva is back for Penrith. The rest is what you'd expect from the Penrith team. Plus Moses Leota comes back in uh, starting. Uh, I'll let you open the batting barn. Yeah, um, getting back to close to probably the strongest team that South can field. Uh, obviously missing Davida Totola and um, in there. Well, this is their halfback now, but um, I can't see him getting close to, to Penrith in this, let's be honest. This um, is a home game, isn't it? The, this is a Panthers home game. No, no, one more. No, South. Uh, South. But, South. Um, right. Yeah, they, they might. They've put in two better performances than they have for the previous, you know, six when they started this year. But um, that that might be enough to keep them close for half an hour in this game. And then uh, I, I dare say the outside backs from Penrith will start creating way too many problems for this South back line to handle. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't see South coming close. I think, and you're right that I think for the first twenty odd minutes, yeah, it'll be a close contest. And then Penrith do that thing that they do where they just wear you down. Take it yep. in goal, take it in goal, drop out, drop out, drop out. The forwards are thing, and then they'll just, the outside backs will run it. They'll just cut them straight mm-hmm. through. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would tip Penrith by 20, 24 plus. Not much more to add. I'm going to, for the record, uh, I'm going to go Penrith 13 plus. Uh, everything both of you said, I think these outside backs will really open the back end. Yep. And a tailored May first try scorer because uh, he let me down last week, and uh, they'll be throwing the ball out there. He'll be on that uh, gay guy, white and edge, but some work to do. Uh, man of the match, let's go. You know, I'm going to go with uh, Brian Tua again to back up and produce another 300-run game and see how he goes. Uh, Barn, what are you thinking? Yeah, pen of 13+. plus. Uh, I liked Cleary's return last week while he wasn't over the top. Uh, the, you saw the attack shift back towards the right a little more than the left, of which they've been previously going to. So I'm expecting that right side to light up the South team. But by, by the end of this game, Isaac Targo's... And um, Liam Martin coming to the fore there and causing all sorts of problems at the back end of this game. I'm going to go with Tago, uh, Tago, first try scorer. And I'm going to go with Cleary, man of the match. I think he knocked that rust off last week and he'll have a big part to play in this one. I'm, 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 I think Blue Eye's peaking to a, a real day out at some point in the next few weeks, but it might be during Origin when he's not when he's given the keys to the team, but we'll see. Do you want to jump in and give your, your, your margins oh, for try well, scorers? Well, I, I would think first try scorer, I would pick Toto for mm-hmm. first try scorer, and I would pick uh, Dylan Edwards if you're a punter. I would tip him to get a double. Okay. I would, he, is got, he is on a mission. Um, and we talked earlier off air that I'm not a Panthers fan in any way, but I, I seriously would – I mean, he was great against the Cowboys last week. He's covering t- – he was in the back line. He was everywhere. I would think he is on a mission here. To put his hand up for state of origin, I know people say no, no chance, and I'm not a Panthers fan anyway. Last year I said no way, no way, and I know there's Tedesco, and I know there's other people, but I would be th- thinking he is on fire this year. 
So I would pick Toto yeah. first. Yep. And um, Edwards for a double. Edwards for a double. Ooh. Yep. Yep. Lovely. Uh, six o'clock on a Friday, we've got Manly hosting the Raiders. Uh, Ricky's put the 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 mop through the Raiders. There dropped off. Um, we got Hopawade now at fullback. Oh, where are we here? Yeah, uh, Hopawade comes in for Chevy Stewart. Uh, Kotrick comes in for Schiller, and Elliot Whitehead returns to the back row, which sees Sasagi uh, out of the seventeen. Ricky's default as usual is to go for the old blokes barn. Um, Seagulls, uh, DC cleared as you mentioned. It. Bullymore comes in for Olakawatu, and uh, Sipley's back from his knee injury. Manly have won three of the last four games against against the Raiders. Yep. Yeah, and after last week, their lack of intensity it's it's pretty concerning. Um, you have know, first crack here, Trev. Right. Well, Canberra last week were disgusting, mm-hmm. and knowing Ricky and what he would have said and well, you would hope the team will listen. They won't put in a performance like that. Um, I think Manly have found a little bit of form. Um, again, the the six seven combination. I, I think it's good. I think Manly will get the, but it won't be a gig like last week. Manly will get it. They may win by eight, yep. maybe twelve. But they, I think last week did they have forty put on them? Yes. Yeah. They they won't do that twice, especially if you're playing for your career, because eventually someone's got to go. You, someone has to go. If you're if you're losing by forty and you're the weakest link, you're gone. So they'll be playing for their career. And it's very rarely uh, Ricky ever goes, isn't it? <laughs> well, Ricky's um, not going to go. No, uh, he, he's. He I'm a Parramatta supporter. I mean, no. I love Brad Arthur's mate. Something's not right. So I agree. It's the that, same um, as Ricky. I'm going. I'm going to agree. I'm going to go Manly one to two. I think there'll be some bounce back. I think there'll be some um, boots up asses and a bit more fortitude this week. So a bit yeah. more of the grind. It'll be a kicking better, game. A bit better, better, better line speed, but the kicking game yep. um, is absolutely in favour of Manly with the DC. Oh, there. shit, yeah. It's, yep. and, it's, and it's not even close. So 1 to 12, uh, and I'm going to bank on Canberra effort more than anything else, to be honest. I'm going to have first try scorer, um, early spreads out wide, getting them troubled, and go with uh, Todd Akula first try um, out in the centres there. And, yeah, Manly match DCE. Pretty easy to find, to be honest, in a contest like this, Barn. Have your crack. I'm not sure that the defence has changed too much, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, I know Whitehead comes in and adds probably a little bit of starch to that middle. The middle should react, uh, especially the, the older statesmen in the front row there that um, didn't have the best of games last week. And that might strengthen up the middle of the field here, but I think there's just way too much pace in this manly side. And if they can uh, if they can get that middle to compress again and get some uh, some gaps appearing out wide... You might see the likes of Saab and Cooler have an absolute day out again. Uh, it, it might not happen till later in the game, but I, I'm expecting Manly to win pretty comfortably by the back end of this game. Manly to win 13 plus. I'm going to go with Tom Trebojevic. Uh, we haven't seen him have his uh, uh, his best game this year, and I think you might just be expecting that out of him in this one. Tom Trebojevic, man of the match, and I'm going to go with Jason Saab, first try scorer. Just burn down that touchline. Yeah, the close. The closer we get this, this might be this might be your game to really slug into some same game multis and get these manly backs um, lined up. The more I think about this, but anyway, game of the round, absolute corker we've got here off back of both their efforts. Eight PM Friday, the Bronx host the Roosters, uh, which sees uh, both teams pretty much as per program. Selwyn Cobbo back in, which pushes Arthur's back to the wing. Uh, no Oates and Ezra Mam back in for the injured. Jock Madden, uh, and we also get uh, Tupo back on the wing for the Roosters. Suwali back into the centres. Jennings pops out. Cracker. Joey Manu's in. Joey Manu's in. He's there. Um, this is this is a ball terror barn. How are you mm. lining up this? Yeah, this is the brilliant game. Um, pretty fortunate that you get your your reserve half injured, and then your number one on five eight comes back into the team. <laughs> pretty good timing there, as, as well as Cobo, who's been. Outstanding this year in the centres. Um, that that's a big, big match up. These two centres against each other. Stags Cobo up against Sawali and Manu. I think that goes a long way to determining who gets in on top at the back end of this game. To be honest, um, the forwards line up pretty well. Uh, you would expect Broncos to probably have the edge early, but uh, the we've seen the Roosters' rotation has been really strong recently, and um, I think they may just gain ascendancy in and around the half. Half time mark there, and um, yeah, I'm exp- I think the Roosters might just get away with this one a little bit yeah, right. more. Um, 
different type of play around the middle of the field with the likes of Watson and Walker with some short kicking and short passing. And um, really like what I saw from the back rowers from the Roosters, the way they were laying lines last week for the, for their halves. So I'm going to go Roosters 1-12. to I'm going to go man of the match, Teddy. Uh, again, another one who's playing for his position in the state of origin. We've seen one or two really good games out of him, but yet to see his best, and it might just be the time for that. And I'm going to go with Tupu. Uh, I think if it does come down to the very nitty-gritty at the back end of this game, you've got your two seven-foot wingers out there uh, off some kick cross kicks to the corners that might just jag a try or two that um, you're not going to see out of the Broncos. So, yeah, Roosters 1-12, to 12, Tupu first try scorer, Roosters uh, man of the match, Teddy. It is... But yeah, it, origin matchups all across all across the park here. Trev, what are you thinking? I'm I'm thinking, and I do like the Broncos, but I I just think the Roosters are on a little bit of a roll. Like I, I really think, as as part of the players' group, I think the game will be won wide. I think it'll be the outsides. It'll be the threes, the fours, the fives, the twos. I think that's where it'll be won. I would be picking um, Manu for a double, and that's yep. where I I mean I think there's too many. There's some great players up the centre. I think it's just the defence from both teams up the middle will be strong. Like you watch the Sharks the other night go up straight up through the middle. They were making 15, 20 metres every every time they took the fast play the ball up the middle, up the middle, up the middle. You won't get that from this. I think it'll be run one wide. Like it'll be it'll be run out on the edges, um, and I would be picking Manu to score two. Yep, that would be what I would be picking. And um, oh, I think Lindsay Collins. Yep. I think he will have a blinder. blinder? If, if there's a, per, and I'm a bit of a Jared fan, but I'm I'm thinking Lindsay Collins. If he when he does when he's on when he does what he does, yeah, he will cause havoc. And the other thing he's got is he's a Queenslander a month out from Origin, and they're all just starting. They're to get all just really playing for really their, warmed up. So <laughs> there's only a couple of people who have got a gig and carrying it. Yeah, Carrigan and Cherry Evans are probably like they go. Well, I'm as safe as a house, right? The rest of you fight amongst yourselves, and I mean I know there's others. There'll be people going. This is me. This is me, and they'll, yeah, they'll put in a they'll put in a show. This will be a this will be a blockbuster. It will be a blockbuster. I'm, I'm teaming Brisbane. I'm teaming Brisbane at home there, and I'm actually going to go towards Adam Reynolds. I think he's having a fantastic season. The game he's been on the field, you know, with him to lead them around and be inter- integral to what they've done. That said, well, I'm going to frame this. I'm going to tip Barn on next Monday. We're going to go three points Carrigan, two points Crichton, or vice versa. I think both of them are going to. It's going to be a, a red hot clash because um, I think Guzzi is is in the supreme form. So can't wait to see that back row clash. And first try scorer Dean Mariner on the back of either a bit of uh, footwork there on the edge or a, a kick from Reynolds. I'm going to say that way. One to twelve Brisbane for me, but honestly. Uh, it could apparently, be anyone's apparently, game. Apparently, sorry, I just got a message. And apparently Nathan Cleary's out tomorrow night. Yep. Nathan Cleary's out tomorrow night, Bun, just in case well, you're wondering. Go. Did that make a well, difference last we'll time he was out? Match, really? um, <laughs> let, make Martin the man of the match. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, three o'clock on Saturday afternoon kicks off with the Bulldogs hosting the Tigers here. Um, for the Dogs, they pretty much look exactly as they did before the bye. Not much to talk about it. Kurt Mann's back at, at 13. And Tigers have named an unchanged lineup from last week. Uh, Trev, your thoughts on this one? That um, cool. Okay, I know you're a Tigers boy. Yeah, I did pick, as we have roughies every year, we all talk down here about roughies, not the, the mainstream. I did tip Bulldogs to come in the top six this year. Wow. Okay. So I'm, going to, I'm still going to tip Bulldogs 1 to 12 over the Tigers this week. Um, they have speed. They absolutely they have, have They speed. have some great speed to pull. If they can utilise that and if they can utilise their speed, you know, along that back line, I'm sure they can open some gaps up wide. I really do. So I'll only tip them under 12 because I think the typical Bulldogs form, they get, and they're the same as Parramatta, they get a little bit in front and then they seem to just, well, we've got a comfort zone here, so we'll just, yeah, that'll do. So I don't think they'll they'll run away like a storm or something like that and just put... Four tries on you in the in the you know space of no time, the Tigers will show up. They'll do their thing, but I just think yeah, Bulldogs one to twelve. Start of the year, I was all excited because this would be one of the games Tigers I could pen in. But I'm tipping the Bulldogs here. I think they've found their stride, and I'm very very scared because if Tigers have an issue, it's out wide, and if Bulldogs have a strength, it's certainly out wide as well. Yep. I'm going to say the Fox first try, and I'm I'm. I'm 
very scared about this possibly being blown. I'm going to go Bulldogs 1 to 12. I'm hoping the, the Tigers forward pack is good enough to hold them and pin them there for a good 20 minutes, half hour, and lay a base. It's just whether it's purely and simply, and we've said this for a long time, haven't we, Vaughn? Uh, can Tigers score more points? And I'm not convinced they can. Man, uh, he's hot. He's my man, Connor Tracy, man of the match. Barney? Yeah, we haven't seen the options out of the halves. Um, Galvin provides a spark here and there, but uh, the rest of the, the ball playing options and try uh, providing options out of the Tigers has not been good. Uh, Bulldogs have been warming into it. I saw a few things out of um, Justin Ollum last week that I really didn't like in defence, the way he was coming out and he was getting beaten on the inside and the outside uh, quite regularly last week. And I think if anyone's going to show him up, it's going to be Stephen Crichton mm. and, J- and um, Jacob Caraz down that edge. Speed. So I've gone with Caraz, um, first try scorer, down okay. down that right-hand side. Off a Crichton ball. Um, off a Crichton ball, whether yep. he holds it up in front of Olam and gets the winger to jam in. One-on-one, if he's up one-on-one with Staines, Caraz probably beats him nine times out of ten anyway. So yep. uh, <laughs> good luck there. Crichton will draw um, two in. Dogs 1-12. to 12. I think Kikau will have a, a massive match again down the, the opposite edge on that left-hand side. He's been doing it all year. He's in pretty close to his career best form. So, yeah, Kikau, man of the match. Karaz, first try scorer. Dogs 1-12. to 12. Then we get to the Gold Coast where they host the Storm uh, off the back of a win, but he's dropped Khan Pereira and Aaron Shoup and brings Sammy and Smith Shields in. Uh, Moe's yeah. also out concussed. Joe Stimson starts at prop. Uh, Fafita's still on the bench but could start. Uh, no, he, sorry, I tell a lie there. He's uh, starting but could come off the bench. We'll see where they go. Uh, Tyron Wishett named on the wing for Coates and Garlic comes in for him. It's the only change, really. It's a lot of old names there. Garlic and Wishart. And well, yeah, two yeah. second-generation stars. Wow. Uh, we've got uh, Storm have won nine of the last ten games against the Titans, and it's Cam Munster's 200th game. Not much to talk about here. Um, <laughs> give, oh, I'm going to just be very quick for us, Trev, but honestly. What are the Storm paying? A dollar ten? A dollar eighteen. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, this. This is going to be uh, thirty plus because once this uh, Queensland spine, well Melbourne spine, uh, really opens it, puts a foot down against this outside backs of the Titans. There is going to be um, plenty of fun to be had. I'm going to watch Cam Munster do his thing again, be man of the match again. I'm going to go first try scorer Pappy, backing up through the middle off something wacky there if Harry or, or Hughes. And, yeah, this will be a score. Barney? Um, yeah, another one. Uh, it's coming into origin time, wants to put his name in there. I think Pappenhausen's going to have an absolute night out in this game. He just seems to have been three warming tries. to it over yeah. the last three weeks. I think, yeah, so, something similar, a hat trick and, and a man of the match performance. So I've got him down for the first try and the man of the match. I think he will own this game. Um, so that full work and speed on some of these outside backs, he might go through without a hand laid on him a couple of times in <laughs> this game. Um, Melbourne Storm do it convincingly. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they do it to blot, to be honest. Um, really the only option I can see is for feeder might cause a few problems for him and jag a try or, or for, for more. But, um, yeah, this... It's going to be a pretty um, comprehensive beating, I would imagine. The other thing he's now doing, which he hadn't obviously hasn't done since his major injuries, is he's now just getting in a dummy half and saying, fuck it, I'm going to run. Or he's getting in and really just saying, give me the ball, I'll make something up. And that's yep. starting to become scary again. He's a bit like Tommy. Mm-hmm. When Tommy was injured, you could just see, Travo- he knew what he had to do, but he, I don't want to get injured, I don't want to get injured. And Pap has been like that. For a while, I'm a fan. I mean, I would have loved him to come to Parramatta. I mean, he just he would bring things to their to their back line. But eventually, over like the next talent, yeah, <laughs> like talent and, and, and non laziness and showing up for training on time but, and speed and yeah, speed well, and a bit of things. speed. Yeah, yeah. the Parry really is lacking oh, speed. Yeah. Yeah. right across. Well, the we'll say, I, read, we'll I, read a, I don't know if you read it, Barn, but um, <laughs> I'll give him a plug. A tremendous article from Rugby League writers today about. Just where test, Parra's yeah, going, yeah, I very, very good. So it's worth checking out. I think my 14th yeah. is right, isn't it, for Parramatta? Yeah, it's, it's optimistic. It's <laughs> it's looking real good at the moment. Who um, scores here? Yeah. I, I, I am Pappenhausen and things like that. I'm thinking this game will be one with kicks behind. Kicks behind the play, yeah. f- speed, comes around, scores, scores, scores. I'm tipping Pappenhausen for three. Yep. 
And the sad thing is, you put that down for it's not going to pay that much. No, you it really you not. Get six, seven bucks. Yeah, that's right. It's not going to pay that much. He the coach last week, I think, was because I looked at it, and he was seventeen dollars for a hat trick, and I, and I thought it was a little bit unders, but mm. in hindsight, it wasn't. He did about twelve. Pappet hasn't be paying seven, nah, seven bucks, no, eight bucks for three tries. That, uh, that's ridiculous. It shows you what your opposition is capable of, and it's not much in yeah. this game, I don't think. But yeah, um, Elijah has discovered Pappenhaus, and that's why his hair's looking the way it is. He now wants to look like Pappy. So <laughs> we had one at two up the other day when Did I was calling two up. Yeah. He comes with the mullet, and he was with his mate. This is a funny story. Just to digress for a sec, he comes out. I know, how about a hand for Pappenhausen? So everyone loves. Well, his mate had brown hair that was long with the big mullet and cut. Well, let's welcome Joe Dirt. <laughs> <laughs> so we had two of them. So I, but everyone's got the Pappy haircut now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, da- Damo started. I blame him. Friend of the show back in the day. Damo's but got no French. style. Hello, French. Damo. French. I haven't seen you for a while. Last yeah. time I saw you on the hill and you were drunk at Panthers. That's, yeah, that sounds like him. Uh, then we get to the Cowboys hosting the Dolphins, who are shockingly shot here, the Cowboys. Uh, he and Luke, he's back for them, though. He's come back in to the back row. Uh, Jake Granville goes back to the reserves. Viliami Valia is ba- is into the centres, and Tom Chester out with his injury. Kafusi and Liam Uelu, uh are both back. Uh, Bromwich... His name to play, and Kenny's out with his HIA. So, Kiri, uh, Oren Keeley, Kenny's out though, and Keeley jumps off the bench to accommodate those two back rowers. We've given um, this game a lot of time, haven't we? Well, I've just noticed Cowboys are forty, Dolphins are three dollars, and I think that's the most ridiculous mark I've ever seen. Why? Why are the Dolphins now given no chance of of one week failure on the backup of Darwin, Barney? Um, I have no idea, to be honest with you. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to go. Uh, Dolphins here are morals. I think Dolphins are going to just grind them out of the game. Dolphins they, they won go, in Darwin. They did, but uh, you, you, you obviously didn't listen. But yeah. every, everyone in the last five years coming off that Darwin game, as both teams have lost every week. So for giving them to Newcastle, and they bounce back here. Ben will get them back. Uh, I haven't got, been on this footy show for five years, no, and here no, I am. So I'm let's tip Dolphins. <laughs> well, I'm tipping Dolphins. That's why yeah. I agree with you. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I think they're a crazy price. I think they've got two very, very good players back. Uh, and, yes, Penrith uh, – Cowboys had a 20-minute spurt against Penrith last week, and I think Penrith are a little bit jog-trotting at times there. Um, they're going to out-muscle them. The, I think they're at-play them. There's more strike in the back line at the moment um, with Zaka, Avrilo, New, but all having good games last week despite the loss. Uh, if Penrith so, had three tries in really in quick time, didn't they, last week? They did, yes. Yeah, yeah was, real yes. quick time. And, and, was... and in a Newcastle game, if everything clicked, realistically, Barney, if everything clicked for Dolphins last week, they should have won by 12. Uh, they, yes. um, Yeah, get on. I'm, I'm keen. I think they're going to win. I think they're almost certain it is. So this is a nice one to take on. So man of the match. Uh, first try scorer, Jake Avarillo. He's having a very, very nice season up mm-hmm. there. And man of the match, Trey Fuller. Also another one making a name for himself. What do you? Well, you've, you've half given away your cards here. Trevor, you go next. Um, I do like the Dolphins. Um, to, last year they were in my they were in my surprise team. I mean they're, yeah. they're, they're hanging in this year. I love Avarillo. I think he's I think he's brilliant. Um, I think you're right on he'll be first try scorer, and um, I think he might actually get more than that. And I think he might actually get player of the match. Mm-hmm. He might actually get man of the match. Um, they, have a, they have a few injuries. The Dolphins. Okay, you go to you go to Darwin and you play and you. You know, you win, you just win, whatever. Darwin's a different ball game. Absolutely. Yeah, well, Darwin's, they and, and they say, and I mean, well, they, I yeah. mean, don't ask me why Parramatta. Last year, I think they took North Queensland to Par- um, to Darwin. Yeah, what why do. would you do that? I don't know if it's the NRL that do that, but why would you do that? I mean, take Canberra or Melbourne or someone who's not acclimatised to the to the the atmosphere, mm. like, you know, the humidity. Dolphins, mm, they're not so much acclimatised, but, yeah, yeah. Um, they they did what they had to do last week, and I think they'll do what they have to do this week. Dolphins one to twelve, Avril for two. Fine. Yeah, just going back to um, I think the bookies have just gotten on the back of the last half an hour that the Cowboys Absolutely had against have. Penrith yep. yeah. um, last week. It's good three tries and Penrith shut down. Cowboys were up and around the top of the ladder coming into round six. They have, and then they've had three pretty poor performances in a row. To be honest, lost to Parramatta. They were well and truly uh, beaten by the Sharks, and then. Um, you know, the late comeback against Penrith, even though they were dominated for a fair part of that game. Yep. I think now if it's if the Cowboys are to 
put some points on and try to make a climb back up the ladder, it has to start this week. So that that might be a part of it as well. Bit of do or die desperation coming out of some of these guys. You've been you've seen Holmes and Drinkwater be cold, pretty cold for the last two or three weeks. So you know what they can do if they get it right, uh, and if they do get it right, they've got more points in them than this Dolphin side. That's probably the only thing that's got me leaning that way. Um, the middles, I think, is is going to be very close. You, I think they're probably just a little bit fitter in the middle, the the Dolphins, uh, the Cowboys than the Dolphins, and might be able to just uh, hold it over them around the halfway mark of this game. And um, yeah, they'll be looking for Drinkwater and Valentine Holmes to have a big game if they want to win this game. I've gone with Cowboys one to twelve. I think um, Drinkwater. If, if this, we know if anyone's going to set up all the points, it's going to be Scott Drinkwater, and he'll be man of the match. But I am going to go with the Dolphins to score first through Jack Box. Bostock. Uh, and buddy, they, they, they you, normally do start pretty quick, and yeah. It, and do you think there's a few um, few Cowboys playing for their um, state of origin careers? Oh, well, definitely. Holmes, uh, off his recent form, uh, hasn't been great. There's been some defensive issues out there. Cotter, I think Cotter's pretty pretty much a mainstay. But Lukey's coming back in, which is a big in for the Cowboys, and the. the Jeremiah and I had a massive game last week too, as well as Finiaki. So I think there's a that strength in the in the back line in the back row probably might just get the Cowboys home. Yep. Sunday kicks off at two o'clock. The Knights hosting the Warriors in a game that I really should sit in the shower and think about this because I, I don't quite know where <laughs> to go because I actually don't think the Warriors are going any good. Uh, and Newcastle going worse. Uh, for team wise, we've got. Uh, where are we here? This is up at Newcastle, isn't this it? Is a, this is at Newcastle. Yep. We've got uh, an unchanged team for Newcastle and Capel's back in for the Warriors, uh, as is Bunty, which pushes Laban out uh, of the team. Uh, Hong, Laban Hong back in? to the bench. No, Laban back to the bench. Roach and uh, Mayue on out of the side. Right. Uh, no Ponga. Ponga's out no for 12 weeks, so yeah, Armstrong's still that's there. That's right, yeah. Uh, Knights have won eight Probably last won't 10. be back till after Origin. No, that's right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the Warriors have not won a game in Newcastle since 2019. Give me some insight here, David. <laughs> I don't have a lot. No. Um, we know the Warriors have got, if they're, at, if they're going well, they've got a much better forward pack and they should be able to really control the middle of the field for, for large parts of this game. And they do have more, um, there's more attacking options, let's be frank. Hastings and Gamble have not really set the world on fire this year. Johnson was fantastic at the start of the year. He's been targeted a bit in the last few weeks. Um, they need to really find uh, another point of attack since, uh, who was it there on the, the left? Uh, since the 5 8 at the start of the year. Metcalf. He was a, was a sharky. Metcalf, that's him. Since he's gone out of this side, they've really lost their way on that left hand edge, and it's going to be up to Marie Martin to really open that up a bit. I think they default back to Charns in this game. I think they really go looking for him to come back through the middle and provide some ball playing options and um, and some running options in the middle of the field. And I think he'll be the man of the match by the end of this game. I don't see the Warriors putting the Knights away. I think it'll be a pretty tough fought game for, for a large part. But um, yeah, I'm going to go with the, the back rowers from the Warriors, like Capewell and Ford to mm-hmm. maybe jag a try each and um, and chance to be everywhere. Uh, like you said about Edwards previously, he's always in the right spot and he's continually following that ball around. So he might get a try or two as well and, and set one up. So probably I'd say something like 24-20 or 24-18 by the end of this game. Warriors 1-12, to chance man of the match. And I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Kate. We'll throw at the, at the mm-hmm. dartboard as first try scorer on that right edge. Fair enough. What do you think in here, Trent? I have zero interest in this game. Okay. I have zero interest. I just, I mean, Shall you, we move on then? You blokes All talk right, well, about will. Um, okay, no. Johnson, kicking game. Yep. I think that's what that's where New Zealand will score their, their points. Okay, they've got big forwards, but oh yeah. Go New Zealand by four. I'm going to, I'm going to, and this is actually, to be honest, almost the last chance here. I'm going to default to New Zealand because I think they're a better team at at full fitness now, getting getting those extra bodies back. Uh, uh, and my default when I default to New Zealand is I'm going to default to Torhu Harris at um, yes. as man of the match. Uh, he'll do his usual 48 tackles, you know, 280 metres, whatever else he has to do, Ford a try assist and something try. else. And Ford or Fanil Blake, first try score. There it is. One of them would do. Uh, one to 12 Warriors. You didn't see that one coming, did you? Nope. All right. Uh, we get to, uh, Expect a pretty big game out of Dylan Walker too, actually. Second week back. Uh, looked pretty uh, yeah, lively last week. Last week. So. And, and I, reckon it, it, I reckon it's a case of they need him. So 
Absolutely. Time to go. You know me, I'm terrible with names. Who's the guy with the headgear with the artwork on it? Uh, Josh Curran is now playing for Now Canterbury. plays for the Bulldogs. Yeah, so, so I'm glad Just you Just ignore that. <laughs> but he's, he's playing the Tigers this week, so he probably He's playing try. quite well for he's the Dogs as well. The middle, There's eh? a roughy, people. Put All him down right. first try scorer. Uh, top of the table here. We've got the local derby. Top of the table, another dollar twenty pop for you. Sharks hosting the Dragons at points bet. Uh, and as I wait for my phone to refresh, it means that the Sharks welcome back Toby Rudolph, which pushes out uh, how to power. Again, Daniel Atkinson partners with Nico. Uh, Sully drops out. Lomax in the centres. Ravalawa back. Luciano is named on an extended bench. We could see him. Sharks have won seven straight against the Dragons. I don't see that changing. I think whatever little... I know Flanagan, Flanagan had this penned in and said, you know, it's yes. go time this week and all the rest of it. But gosh darn, they were bad last week. If there's bounce back, they will need to double bounce. And find a trampoline or two along the way. Barney's smiling already. He knows what the result's yeah, going to be. Yeah, Look yeah, at him. Yeah, yeah, he already another, knows it, what it, the result's going to be. I know what be. it's going to be. Three points to Nico. It's my first try <laughs> yeah, scorer right. to Mulatalo. And Nico to set and, up seven tries. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. So it's an easy watch. There's not much more Good to win, say. Good win, Barney. Yeah, you, you're done, Trevor. <laughs> yeah, I'm done. Yeah, right. Anything for you, Barney? <laughs> no, I, just, I was just you thinking talk. about I'll the go, comments. I'm going to go and get a drink. Thank you. The comments from Flanagan last week was pretty cheeky in the press conference with his. I, know, I won a comp with them. I don't think they've won one since. And I can, <laughs> we've, we've, we've got it on the calendar. We're coming for them. But they would want Luciano in this team, I think. Um, they really needed that bit of extra size because that's where they're going to have to take the Sharks on. Because I, I don't think they've got um, the capability to cut them open out wide um, as often as the Sharks do. And if they were getting into a game of touch footy, they'll, they'll probably get comprehensively flogged. So um, they're going to really want to try and play through the middle and Play that tough grinding play with a bit of offloads from maybe DeBell and Luciano for Taylor Mariner. But um, I think the Sharks will work <laughs> through the middle well enough for 20 minutes and then they'll start trying to get to these back rowers and uh, centers and wingers. Saw Ramian have the game of his uh, of his of of this season last week and I think he'll continue on with a very strong performance in this game and um, probably even grab the first try out there on, on an edge. Uh, either going over the top of someone or going through with a dummy and untouched. Uh, Cam McGinnis, I'm going to go for man of the match because I think the Dragons are going to come through the middle. And if they do that, they're going to have Cam McGinnis around their ankles for the entirety of the night with the 45, 50 tackle um, set up and his normal 150 run meters and some stitches through the middle of the field. And um, yeah, Sharks 13 plus. I think yeah. that it may be close for 40, 50 minutes, but I think yeah, the last half an hour of this game, the Sharks should push away with it. Now, if, if you're Shane Flanagan and you're sitting in your basement obsessing about this game for a good six months, what plan do you come up with? Yeah, well, I, I dare say it's um, really try to target the middle early to tire out some of these middle forwards in the Sharks, uh, try to turn, uh, run at um, Braley as much as possible. Obviously, one of the smaller targets in the middle who who, who does bounce off tackles occasionally. Uh, some some second phase play in the middle of the field. And then, um, yeah, to, really their, their main weapons, obviously, are Lomax out on an edge. You'd be kicking high to him and, um, and trying to get him as, involved as much as possible. And maybe try to isolate Ravalawa on um, Katoa down an edge and try and get him on one-on-one -on -one as much as possible to try and sort of, you know, use his power to go over the top of Katoa. But, um, yeah, I dare say it'll be second phase through the middle and then when they spread, they're going to have to spread the ball real quick and mm. get it out to those edges fast. So Very, very good. Um, have you got your bet ready or do you want to save that for a first Yeah, yeah. no, I've got no, all my bets fire ready. away. Go and let us um, have your uh, disaster class. Who you are on fire bait. Two week, two winning weeks in a row. Two what, winning weeks in a row. Yes, um, I, we went I, I with won't. all the fullbacks last week. Got yeah. a fifteen dollar multi up, and um, I think it was about a, a ten dollar multi the week before. So I managed to come back from minus six hundred to uh, I'm now a positive one hundred and seventy two dollars uh, for the season. Um, Daggy's minus eight hundred. He's missed every week so yeah, far. Just, quick sure that just around me. the corner. I stopped. I stopped trying about four There'll weeks. There'll be something around so the will, corner. I, I'm, I'm, I'm fired up again, but I'll put it on Facebook. I don't have anything ready yet. I've got a straight head-to-head -head match up with the Roosters, Cowboys, and Warriors all to win. That'll get you six dollars fifty. I'm going to put five dollars uh, fifty-five on that. This week I've gone with the wingers instead of the fullbacks. I've gone Jason Saab, Daniel Tupu, and 
uh, Jacob Carraz all to score tries at any time. They are number you fives. Get... Yes, mm. I believe so. You get ten dollars, yeah. ten dollars oh. fifty for that. So Thanks, got thirty-five dollars on that at ten dollars fifty. And I'm going to go with I'm going to go with Cape. Well, first try scorer. I think a little short ball in that Warriors game at twenty-three bucks. You could worse than having ten dollars on him at twenty-three. Do you want to throw out a, a bet for us, Trevor? You mentioned a couple <laughs> there. Someone a, a double for Manu or a double for. That's how I bet. Mm-hmm. That's what I bet. You're just picking the double. So well, pick what was a... the two that we saw? We, we'll put Edwards and Manu together I would pick, as a double. Uh, what what a double that is. Yeah, fair enough. Four tries scored, two players. Get three, you, you know, yeah. Could have better than even. Double Edwards, that. double Manu. You'd have to get $9. You'd have no, to get, get, well you'd have get nine you get fives into fives, I'd yeah. say. Yeah. So, yeah, that's all right. Well, let's yeah. go with that. Let's put that down. GT, if you're listening. And I will put something up on Facebook tomorrow because now I'm a bit obsessed that I have to – get a same game multi up after last week where I, I I missed on five different games on four leg multis and got three out of four every time. I've watched I, you play bingo and you, you get to one and you get to one number yeah. with twenty numbers to be called and you still can't win. Actually yeah, you know I mean, another thing? Mm-hmm. Nico Hine I think. Mm-hmm. Nico I think he might even he might even score a double. He might just think, you know what, I'm not even going to kick this. And you know and Barney will know that I know you both do, but Barney being a shark you know, he shapes to kick and then and then they slide and then all of a sudden he sees a gap and he bang, bang. He takes it himself. He a just double. takes he it himself. He did that last week, actually. Uh, let's go, let's go double for over. Trev. Double Edwards, double Nico, double... Oh, shit, that'll pay. Double Manu. 5x5x5. Uh, five five I'll, 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 I'll work it out and put this up and I'll find a nice picture of Trevor. <laughs> Don't, how can you do that? Look, yeah, I'll work this on This is something. as good as it gets. All right. Um, well, I've got, the, I've got the two doubles. I've got Edwards for two tries or more and Manu two tries or more. That'll get you $60. You throw two for Nico in there. And What's that going to get you? Yeah, a new house. Well, we'll you get eighty-five. You'll get eighty-five dollars. Yeah, we'll All right, Trevor. What's got you frothing for the week? And what are you excited about the rugby league this week? The week ahead. What game are you going? I need to go to the gums and watch this year, or whatever it might be. Melbourne. Mm-hmm. Yep. You just want to see a real hatchet job. Yep. I want to. I want, when, you know what it's like when they play. They play. Yeah. They're on. When they're on. And, I mean, there's not often that they are on. There's a few F-ups in between. But when they're on, they're on. And they will be on. Yeah. And they will just carve them. And you'll just see absolute football. The whole ball being spread from left to right, right to left. Back, draw them in, put a kick behind, bang, Pappenhausen, Pappenhausen. Yeah. Oh, there's another one you can add in. Pappenhausen well, to, for two. Throw the Pappenhausen. Oh, we've got two right, v two so, v so two. for a five grand, a five grand all up. You know, I'm going to well, put, at, I'm gonna put uh, it we've on. We've thrown in Nico for two or more tries, and we're at nine hundred dollars at the moment. Right. Let's put two so for Pappenhausen. Let's assume the same for Pappy. Pappenhausen. All right, um, I'm going to put a dollar on this just for the. So am I, because uh, everyone should do it. And you can win fourteen hundred dollars. Oh, thirteen hundred dollars here if you have all four. And, and property yeah, mobiles will be your two grand to be honest. So what we're going to do here. Oh, well, next. I, well, I, what's got me frothing is uh, well, you, you've excited me because I really I think there's a late claim to be had for Pappy for that Origin fullback spot. If he if he gets a hat trick this week, then all of a sudden his name's in the headlines and he's on the way back. You, you don't before his knee injury, his seven injuries. He's where had, you, where you're playing him? Well, in, this is my point. They're, they're, yeah. they're saying the full box, full fullback spots open. I think he's a better fourteen than either Teddy or Edwards, um, but. Yep. That being said, if he scores a hat trick, all of a sudden his name's back in lights, and you never, never know. You see him, him, but obviously the Friday night's got me excited. That Brisbane Roosters game will know a pretender from the rest. One hundred percent. Brisbane could put thirty on him, and I just shut my mouth. I never mention Roosters again, or it could be a real clash, and and they're both top four teams. Barn. I'm pretty sure that's the way it's looking um, at the moment. And, that, yeah, that's a game that's really got me excited for this weekend. The other two is the two Sunday matches. I think you'll get a really good read out of the Warriors and the Knights match up here. Um, I kind of expect the Warriors to do a pretty decent job against the Knights, but it wouldn't surprise me if they didn't because their form for the last three weeks has been pretty poor. They can and, get um, lazy. They yeah, can get it, very lazy absolutely. very quickly, the Warriors. If they don't do a job, I'm getting a texter out. And the Dragons, at their best this year, have been competitive. And if they bring their best to that game, that should turn out to be a decent match against the Sharks, um, even if it does sort of blow out at the back end of the game. But, yeah, the, the Sunday games and that Friday match for mine are the three big ones for me to watch this weekend. Um, throwing in Pappenhausen, 
So we've got a four a four leg two or more try scorers. Sixteen hundred. We'll get you three thousand one hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, people have twenty bucks on you that. Put and, twenty bucks and, on that and, and become a property. Come mobile. down and buy Adrian and I a drink. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, if that gets up, come down and buy Adrian and I a drink. And a also box. Trev. <laughs> All right, and you're going to finish on Trev. Plug your plug. Where do you call you if you want to get in touch with Penrith Valley Services? Oh, do your lawns? Yeah, we'll cut your grass. How do we get in touch? PenrithValleyServices.com or yeah, we can get on to um, Penrith Valley Services at www.penrithvalleyservices.com, mm. and you can get it's that. almost like I'm a professional. It, don't I sound professional? I'm a very good accountant. <laughs> very good accountant. People, if you want your book work done, this bloke is the man. Um, but we're talking football. We're not talking. My business, because we don't need to, because when your multi gets up, <laughs> I won't have to mow any lawns. <laughs> right. You come down and pay the VIG 10% each, we are up. That, that, that sounds like a plan, and I'll be doing it for sure. Any By the way, of... I bought a race I bought in a race no, Tell us about it quickly. Well, you know more about it. I forget. I got no uh, memory. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, ha- uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, he's, bought in, he's bought into a half to your song, for those that know. It looks like a wet track. A lovely, gooey bred horse. Uh, I dare say, uh, make a nice broodmare down the road. But see you, Dana. Uh, we just got to pray for some rain. We do, yeah. 1,600 yeah. metres and we'll be, yes, a shoe in. A couple of years to come yet. <laughs> yeah, but, two uh, years' time, it'll be a shoe yeah, in. We'll let that now. Anything you want to finish on, Barn? Before I let you go and get out of this. Sh- well, I've just put a dollar fifty on that multi, so <laughs> <Very> <laughs> let's hope we're looking at close to five grand this time next week. You, but, can, thank, um, you can thank me later. Yeah, absolutely. No, um, footy should be exciting. I hope you two, you two boys look after yourselves, and thanks again. It's been good. Thank you, everyone. Right back at you. Yep. Don't lose our table, Shelley. We're coming over there. So uh, subscribe. <laughs> Leave us some feedback on Spotify, YouTube, all that good stuff. Do you hit the thumbs up and button? We'll, yeah, do that thing. Yeah. And we'll talk like to everyone and subscribe. soon. Yeah. yeah. See you guys. See ya. Bye.